Hello everybody and a happy new year. NBL Overtime is back as we get into the 2019 part of the 18-19 NBL version. I'm Cam Luke, of course, get involved anytime you like. Hashtag NBL Overtime, hashtag NBL19 at NBL on what has been a, well, a pretty big two weeks since we last touched base. The Kings are atop the NBL ladder. The Perth Wildcats need a third import and the Cairns Taipans are still sitting on that one win. If you do follow Corey Homicide Williams on any type of social media, you'll know that he demanded... If the Wildcats lost last night, that somebody would be sacked. That didn't, in fact, happen. So we sacked Corey Williams and brought in Tommy <laughs> Hirsch from NBA. That's only a joke. If you're watching Corey, we'll talk later. Tommy Hirsch, welcome and Happy New Year Thanks, to you. Thanks, Cam. Great to be here. And, uh, I mean, I think Corey's probably having more fun than oh. me from his Instagram, but I'm, I'm happy to be here and filling in for him. Nah, unlike Corey, just a text last night and tell us he won't be here, but now he's <laughs> sipping champagne on Sydney Harbour. <laughs> Liam Santa Maria is here. Liam, welcome yep. to you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you boys. Happy New Year, Corey. Out there, I know he's watching. He's got to be watching. No doubt. You'd imagine. And Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, uh, exciting times, and uh, you know, we, I think it was two weeks ago when we last did the show, and we were unsure where the Sydney Kings sat. Melbourne were going to town, and they got the job done. United on the road against the Kings, and it asked some more questions. But since then, the Kings have been brilliant, and now they sit atop the NBL ladder, and by far the talk of the NBL town. Yeah, well, they are, and like people are talking about them as, as clear title favourites mm. now. I'm still not convinced they're absolute, you know, yes. undoubted title favourites, but they are. They are there. They are thereabouts. And the Good. only reason I say that is. Yes, they've won 11 of their last 14 games, but those three losses have all come against Melbourne United. So for me, until they can beat Melbourne United, I'm starting to sound like Corey again, I know. Melbourne, but is Melbourne their kryptonite? You Actually, are. he talks about Boone, Boone being Bogut's yeah. kryptonite, but is Melbourne City's kryptonite? So until they can beat them, I'm not sure you can call them clear-cut favourites, and Melbourne's still very much in the conversation. On Melbourne, as you look at this, the open air game on Boxing Day, it's always probably, it's my favourite yep. non-playoff NBL game of the year, and Casper had that chance to, to win at Liam, a little bit short, and... United didn't get the job done, and then of course, look at oh, that play. Poor, poor Tarangi, <laughs> <laughs> who's having a really good year too. But geez, Jerome Randall's having an outstanding year as well. We'll feature a little bit later in our All NBL selections when we give our halfway point. What did, what did you make of Brisbane, who had an opportunity to, to sort of set the tone and, yep. and lock down that fourth spot? Mm. What did you make of them in Sydney? I thought they were pretty good mm -hmm. in Sydney. Certainly, they were really, really good on New Year's Eve uh, in Wollongong. There's Jacob Wiley. He was spectacular all round 11. But no, I thought the Brisbane Bullets um, turned up in Sydney and uh, the Kings were just too good. Speaking of turning up, the Illawarra Hawks didn't turn up last night, in particular for the first three quarters. They had a bit of a dip in the last one. They were 30 odd points down. But, you know, they're, they're going into the new year Brisbane with that dog fight with Adelaide for the fourth spot. And This was a big hit, oh, boys. This was Tariko White. You know, hadn't scored in the fourth quarter yeah. for five games and Trevor Gleeson stared down the barrel and said, T, look at me. I need you to step up. A couple of possessions later, hits that big three. And that was a tough three. Mm. Hand in the face, uh, off the dribble, up eight at the time with still enough time on the clock for Cairns to make a run. And that shot for mine put it beyond doubt. Cairns, we'll get to Sydney very shortly. Mm. Corey Williams said a couple of weeks ago on this show, he doesn't think they'll win a game for the rest of the year. And we yeah. both disagreed. Do you still disagree? Yeah, they'll sneak a game. They'll win a game. They'll Thank sneak you. a game at some point. Thank I think you. someone on the call, I think it might have been Worthington, maybe Trigger, said um, if not at some point in the next kind of three or four weeks or five weeks when everybody's up and about, at the end of the season when one of the top teams comes Resting. rolling into town no and they know they've got first or second spot mm. tied up, maybe that'll be the case because it'll be all on the line for the tight ends. But... They just, uh, uh, you'd love to see them play with a little bit more they're, just heart and desire. Yeah. I mean, if that's a harsh they're in thing games. to say. They're in I know, but in fourth quarter of the game. You, how can you be know. in so many games and not have a game where you go, you know what, we're going to play better than them in the fourth quarter? Remarkably, I don't think this has ever been happening in the world of sport, Tommy, but is there a chance that they have a full roster of guys without a killer instinct? Oh, I don't know Ooh, about that. That's, that, that's, wow. that's well, a bit harsh. That's but, getting really harsh. But, well, it sounds it, but you get to a fourth quarter and they're in games and they haven't been able to do it you once. You ask yes. why they can't get over the line, and to me, it just comes down to pure talent. They do not have the depth of these other teams, especially when you look at their local talent. And we've said this all year. It's not news to anyone, but this is showing itself game in and game out. They are too reliant on guys like Trimble. They've started to use Jawai more, which is a good sign for me, heading in the right direction. But what else are they getting out of their locals? Well, how, this wasn't the issue in pre-season when we were all talking up the Taipans and saying, hey, ooh, I like the way you've put to your Roblo. That was a nice little pickup. If Nature White can stay healthy, you've got this trio of imports that look like they'll be able to get the job done. 
Unfortunately, they've had a couple of guys who haven't played up to what they hoped, right? Lucas Walker, who is getting there, every game yes. looking better and better and starting to really piece it together. Alex Loughton is not the Alex Loughton of last no, season. He's been injured. Nowhere, and, yeah. nowhere near it. Um, they're going to sneak a yeah, game. I agree. And I wrote today, it's when Rob Lowe lights a game up. We've seen him as a previously for New Zealand has the capability to be a game breaker. Mm -hmm. And as that, you know, he's one of those guys who can like Daniel Kickett, who can with the right matchup, get open, knock a few shots down in the second half, late in the fourth quarter and, and break a game open. That hasn't been there. And Kelly's given him a bunch of minutes to put him in the starting lineup in early November, has had one game as a starter in double figures, his second donut of December the other night. Um, it's been frustrating for him. He hasn't found his stroke, but when he does, I think they're going to sneak a win. Hashtag NBL19, hashtag NBL overtime. The Sydney Kings sit atop the ladder after only having five losses to start the NBL year. Mm. Tom's still a little bit unsure. Are unanimous title favourites right now for you, Liam? They're the title favourites. Yep. The question has to be now, what's got to happen for them not to win it? For me. Because I think what's coming true is what we saw in preseason when people like Shane Hill said, well, this is the best team ever assembled. Now it's on them to put it together and cash in and win the title, which was similar things were said about Melbourne no doubt. last season. Yeah. Aaron Fern before that season said, um, if they don't win it, there's a problem, right? And sure enough, as the season played out, they won it. Now they got pushed to five games in the grand final series. Could have gone either way at that point. But when you see the forest for the trees, they won it. I think the same thing is happening here with the Kings. The question was, will they be able to put it together? Will Bogut have the impact defensively to improve that team at that end of the floor? Well, as Andre Lamanis pointed out in their press conference post-game over the weekend, he has absolutely transformed that team yeah. at the defensive end. They are at by far the best defensive team in the league now, according to the eye test and all the advanced metrics. And for me, it's theirs to lose at this point. You know what I liked what they did on the weekend? It's something they haven't done yet. And it's a big reason why I still have Melbourne as the number one title favourites. One, they haven't, as you touched on earlier. They haven't quite been able to beat them yet, the Sydney Kings. But they've got two alpha dogs late. Ware and Golding are both prepared to stand up and take the shot without really any fear of failure, which is something you need to have. Sydney got Jerome Randall and they haven't been able to do it in certain parts yet. But they gave it to Bogut late. We spoke about a month ago about mm. do they need to go through Bogut more so in late game situations. Not necessarily just to score as he did on the weekend, but he is such a gifted passer. Go that way. And that's what they did yeah. late. They put in the hands of Andrew Bogut. He's mm. almost unguardable. And you touched on the Josh Boone kryptonite Corey Williams situation earlier. But I like what they did. Doesn't necessarily mean that every possession goes through Bogut when you've got a Randall or a, or a Lish who mm. put up a donut on Sunday, which is about as rare as it comes. But that's what I like the most from what they did on Sunday. No, and I think that was huge and I think you're right because their improvement and the reason that, well, I guess the, the one thing that will continue to elevate them into those title favourites is their offence because, as you said, their defence is already there. It's unbelievable right now. I mean, Bogut is a game changer, but the rest of the team have stepped up. But they are not yet at their peak offensively. And you heard Randall talk about that after the game as well on the weekend against Brisbane, that he's still learning to play mm. off Bogut in many ways. Mm. So you think about Randall, who's currently, I think, fourth in scoring and, and right up there in assists as well. Mm. If he's going to keep elevating his play towards the end of the season... That is what can carry them over the line. They need to and beat they Melbourne. Still, they they need to beat Melbourne in the regular season. Yeah. They can't go to a playoff series without zip and four. Uh, you can. Well, and you they can. might. And they might. if they have home court advantage, they'd still be feeling, I think, pretty good. It's it's it for a mental thing, it would yeah, be good to no tick doubt. that over for sure. The, you're talking about the improvement that is still to come offensively. They've actually still got plenty of room for improvement at the defensive end. Mm. There's a and you can see it, we'll break it down in a minute, some of the things. They are one of the poorest. Uh, defensive rebounding teams in the league. Bogut, obviously, out and out the best. But there's a lot of situations where he's blocking out his man, it goes the other way, or he comes across defensively as the help man trying to block shots and the, the blocking out's not happening on the other side. Yeah. The, and in other areas as well, to think where they are defensively and they've still got a whole bunch of improvement... They're going to take some serious beating. Well, they are the best defensive team in the league. Mm. As you touched on the improvement, I think you're going to actually point out right mm. about now when we have a look at how their defence breaks down. And Andrew Bogut anchors it yes. so particularly well. Liam Santa Maria about the talents exactly why it's so good, but mm. where it can get better as we lead 
towards the playoffs. Yeah, well, I picked out a couple of clips here just to try and sh try to show like the the kind of impact that Bogut has. Right now, we know about the the shot blocking and the statistical impact that. But something Andre Lamanis was talking about about was the impact he has can often be reflected in the um, team's defensive stats. Now, these are. These first two clips are from uh, their most recent game against Brisbane. There's one at the end from their recent loss to Melbourne. Now, have a look here. This, is, this clip here shows a couple of things. It, 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 part of it shows the, um, the area still to improve, the defensive rebounding, but also just the presence Bogey has as the anchor of their defence. You see here, Lamar Patterson's got it on the wing. That's, for many people, that's a lane along the baseline there. Uh, Bogut communicating to Bowen, saying, I'm here, force your man to the baseline, we'll be right. Roll the tape. You'll see Patterson. All right, so he takes it a bit. Bowen slides well. Vico <laughs> Mika doesn't want <laughs> any piece of that. Look at Bogey still hanging around. Look at the impact he has on that shot. Now, Vakona would usually go back up. Can't do it. Bogut's blocking out. No one else is. All right, the ball goes long. Vakona, again, doesn't want any piece of it. Look at the impact. Bogut's having down there the shots that they're getting. Patterson's to the rim. Bogey turns him away and he sends that one packing. Now, here's the next clip. This is... Look at the situation. It's a few minutes into the fourth quarter. Brisbane's still within striking distance. This is the type of thing that Bogut brings to this team defensively that most other teams don't have happening. He's constantly putting out fires. This is often offensive rebounding situation, so it's a scramble cross matches. Randall guarding Tarangi. So you, what you just missed there was Tarangi and Gibson both pointing at Mika, saying, get out, let me take the mouse down into the house. All right, and Bogut, this is something that they've been working on. Clearly, the Kings, they've been doing it more and more over recent weeks. Roll the tape. You'll see him communicate to Randall and put out the fire and say, all right, switch. So they go away from that. They have to go to something different. But Mika doesn't want to go towards Bogut. He also doesn't want to go to his left hand. <laughs> and they draw the offensive foul. All right, pause this one. Similar type of situation. You see Randall is caught on the cross match on the weak side there with Barlow. So Melbourne immediately... They try to go and post Barlow, which is what teams traditionally have been doing to Randall over the years. Put him in the block, draw fouls on him, make it tough. And you can see Bogut. Now, this is where the awareness... This is part of where Sydney can still improve, the awareness of the other players. Mm. Bogut will switch off Boone to help Randall and take Barlow in the block. Boone, meanwhile, empties out to the weak side. It's on David Ware to be a second earlier on his awareness as he switches on to Boone. Watch the play unveil. So you see now Bogut switches out onto Barlow. Off goes Randall. David Ware just a little doesn't do his work early enough and there's a foul there. But it just goes to show the types of things Bogut has brought to that defence. This is NBA-level communication, Xing off the ball that a lot of other teams aren't doing. And as a result, he's covering... We talk about Bogut covering for their weaknesses, and we think that's, oh, just guys getting beat off the dribble. Mm. But it's all over the floor. All right, so title favourites? Yes. Equal with Melbourne. At Equal, OK. I, I still have Melbourne in front because I haven't beaten them just yet, but I think that when we get to the playoffs, I think they can't go zip and four into it. We spoke about a lot last year when it came to New Zealand and Melbourne were able to get over the hump in the end of the regular season and that semi-final held them in good stead, so I think a similar thing here. The battle for fourth, though, is really interesting because we've spoken a lot about who we think... I thought it was going to be Brisbane. I think uh, Homicide was like, yeah, Adelaide stuffed. You were big on the 36ers getting going with Conga in and Wiley and Sobe continuing to play. And mm. the recent run, four straight for the Adelaide 36ers, makes this thing really hotly contested because, one, you want to make the playoffs for it. But there's also the way that Perth have played the last couple of weeks, it's not necessarily you're going to finish fourth. You could push, continue to push your way up. Melbourne on a bit of a... Not a slump, but have been up and down at certain points as well. So this team, right now, not only when we talk about finishing fourth, they're a team that could continue to push deeper into this playoff run, and they're fun to watch. The top five, the top, sorry, the top four is going to be made up of those five. Mm -hmm. Illawarra and New Agreed. Zealand. I think we can wave them goodbye now at this point. It's unfortunate, uh, but that's, I think, in New Zealand, that game against Adelaide this week was the real key for them. Yep. Um, but the makeup 
It's re- I've only got Sydney locked into that top four at this point. Probably Melbourne as well. But how that top four makes up out of that five... It could go any which way. Both Brisbane and Adelaide could make it. You know, in sport, we always hear, you know, you don't want to, pl- you don't want to face them in the finals. Don't you? It's always that wild card X Factor team. There's two this year. You've got someone like the Adelaide 36ers, who a majority of those guys played in an NBL Grand Final Series last year and fell a game short. And then you've got Brisbane, who are full of talent and now have that guy who stands up late in Lamar Patterson and deals with it. These are two teams, regardless of if you finish, if you finish on top and you have home court advantage against one of these sides, say Brisbane and Adelaide, if we're going on the rankings currently, Mm. it's going to be a very uneasy series. Now, not to suggest that they will beat the top-ranked team, but it's also one of those situations that you don't want to have to face one of these teams who will probably be playing their best basketball, considering import changes normally takes a little while to get going. They're going to be playing their best basketball at the end of the year, which is exciting for the comp. Mm -hmm. You have five teams probably in red-hot form come February and March. And, look, that's a great point because both those teams, Adelaide and Brisbane, Mm -hmm. are starting to hit their peaking levels now. They haven't been peaking early in the season and they're getting better and better and better. Brisbane, especially if they bring in a third import now, could go to another level. Mm -hmm. I wrote about last Mm week five reasons why I think they're a title contender. And that was before they even added a third import. That, the, well, well, did like, you believe in all five uh, of those have, reasons? I did. Oh. I actually <laughs> did. Have they added the import yet? Where, where do we sit on this third import? Well, the, the, the last I heard is there's a name floating around but nothing yet confirmed. But okay. if you listen to the broadcast, CJ yeah. Bruton said they yeah. basically locked someone in. Yep. So we're waiting for it to become official, I believe. And is Kendall hanging around or not? Because he doesn't look like the same player that he was early in his days when he seemed to be fighting for a contract and he was yep. nowhere near effective on the weekend as he was in those first couple of games, and one in particular against Melbourne where he was great late without scoring a great deal. Does, is Kendall still there if they bring another import in? Yeah, yeah, that's... He, he, yeah, yeah I think Kendall is still there. I mean, I would be shocked if it wasn't Hajima mm-hmm. that was the guy that they made space with. Mm. Now, the process there is you have to pay him out. Yeah. Where that's the, the... He's a non-restricted player. Um, you would imagine it wouldn't be Will Magne in the same thing because he's part of their future, no doubt, over the next couple of years. That would be... I would be shocked if it didn't play out that way. Um, but, boy, doesn't it make them super intriguing if they weren't enough intriguing already? Jacob Wiley, talking to 36ers, had, had a really good start. To, he had a bit of a flat patch, four or five games, but has really stood up, was outstanding last weekend against Melbourne. And mm-hmm. the question now gets raised, hashtag NBL19, NBL overtime, find us at NBL on Twitter and answer the question, is he one of the greatest dunkers in NBL history? I, so you've been pumping it up on Twitter. Where does he sit for your uh, for your <laughs> list? Well, to me, he's right around about there, around that top ten all time. I'm not, you know, I, I ran a little bit of a poll, and I know we've got one up on NBL at, on NBL Twitter at the moment. Oh, look how um, close it is! Really close there. So he's right around that what? borderline. What are um, they thinking? If, if you think about the guys that have come before, yeah, name like, some. It's like guys like obviously. James Smith is the number one name that jumps out. Better my, than Wiley. My favourites, Leon Trimmingham. Wiley better. Isaac Burton. Well, better than Wiley. Calvin Talford. Better than Wiley. Bennett Davison. Better than and Wiley. Bennett Davison, the one is where I see a lot of similarities with yeah, me too. and the yeah. way he goes about it. Mm-hmm. They have a really similar game. But Wiley is making a case. I'm not sure he's quite there yet as top ten, but he is an excitement machine and he gets this team going as well. It's not just about True. the dunks. It's what he does for the team as well. True. He's not top ten yet. I'm not saying he can't be, but yep. he's not top ten just yet. I'd say that... There's a few others to throw into. Yeah, you know what? A lot of them let's, have worn Sydney Kings jerseys over yes, the years well, as well. well, the D-Train. D-Train? Yeah. Wayne McLean didn't get a, get a mention. Um, uh, Leonard Copeland, Gopes. obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sammy Mack. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Now, you know who never gets a mention in this, these rankings but should? He was here for a short, a good time, <laughs> not a long time. Jahi Carson. Mm. You might remember. Oh. Ali ooped it to himself, himself off the backboard yeah. and to himself off the floor. In one game. Um, And then a few other guys. The thing that I think puts you... And and I think Wiley needs to do this a couple of times to put himself up in the Pantheon, is he's got to catch a few more bodies. He has to. Good call. And, like, a guy like Marcus Timmons, at his peak, Mm -hmm. was catching a lot of bodies. And then dancing. (laughs) <laughs> which, adds, which adds to the whole situation. Harry Felix on Tom Abercrombie. Yeah, now, he's not in the top ten no, because he didn't do it enough. Yeah. But that, that few of those yeah. types yeah, of dunks yeah, will put yeah. him up. Look, he has the potential, which is the worst word in sport. He has the potential to be a top ten <laughs> NBL dunker. It will be he's interesting so to fun. see. Oh he, he is fun God. to watch. He's so, and you know what? Resign that guy. I said it on the broadcast. Mm-hmm. You want, I mean, Adelaide, they need to resign Nathan Soap after what happened last offseason mm-hmm. in Adelaide. You need to re-sign Nathan Sobey and you need to re-sign uh, Jacob Wiley because sitting in that arena calling those games, they 
love him. I agree. Mm. Sobey's got to be first, though, when you've got a second Victorian team, second Melbourne team, sniffing around about to re-enter the comp. Yes. They've no, got you're to right. get Nathan Sobey because of where he's lived. But there's no doubt, those two guys yeah. who, when they play their best, and this is something that's understated, when they're at their best and they're both high-quality basketballers, that's when Adelaide are at their best, and that's the type of players yeah. you've got to hold on to. And the thing about Jacob Wiley is he is such a great bloke. You want to talk about culture and a locker room guy and a guy who sets... You know what Mitch Creek did that for them about setting the standard of how hard you play every time you step on the floor, every single possession, and demanding that of his teammates? He does that, and you need to re-sign him. Got to also say, I, I bumped someone up a couple of positions on a list... When they get involved on Twitter and thank someone for including them in a conversation, which I see Jacob Wiley did on Twitter the other day with you, Tommy. Yeah. So that's, you know, if you're going to put your hand up and say, hey, thanks for getting me involved. In other <laughs> words, I read that as I should be in the top ten. I'm just making it known that everyone knows that I'm actually watching the results. No, that's what oh, he's, right he's, he's just <laughs> like that. He's, he's just so humble and nice. <laughs> you won't meet a nicer bloke. All right, Melbourne. Unless you meet Andrew Gates. Um, Melbourne have got ten days off as we lead. They're playing Brisbane on Sunday, but that loss last week, blockbuster, roof open, outstanding, just over 10,000 at Melbourne Arena, but couldn't get the job done over... Mm. The team we were just talking about. Where do you see Melbourne at right now? Well, look, it was a little bit of a sputter is how I would put it for them, but they've still won six of their last nine games. They've still beaten Sydney, Perth and Brisbane during that stretch as well. So they've had some really good quality wins. Obviously, the thing that let them down on Wednesday night on Boxing Day was letting Adelaide dictate the tempo mm -hmm. for that entire game. And they couldn't really reel it back. Made a bit of a run, but couldn't quite get it done. So they'll look at that, but I think it's just a little bump in the road. The one thing I would like to see from them, though, is getting DJ Kennedy and Mitch McCarron a little bit more involved consistently in every single game. We saw that a bit out of Kennedy on Wednesday night, but Mitch has been really up and down. Uh, you know, his form's been really up and down, and when he is firing, uh, that just makes them much harder to defend. They're a lot deeper. Wow. And to me, that's a little bit lacking. You are little Homer right now. Yeah. Really? Yo, yes, you've got no love for Sydney being the title favourites because mm -hmm. they can't beat Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying there's no problems for Melbourne. They've lost three of their last five. Just when we thought they'd turn things around defensively with those wins over Perth and... Sydney. So Sydney. if you were sitting here a week ago in the mm. studio after they'd beaten Sydney... No, I was all about them. But, problems? but I was thinking because they'd turn their defence around and then Adelaide just marched all over them, put up triple figures on Melbourne's biggest stage of the season on their home floor. Um, you can't just wipe that away and say it was a little sputter. It was... That, the, their three of their last five games, they haven't been there defensively. They've been there twice. That's where their bread's buttered and they need to get back to doing that. Blockbuster fatigue. Oh, and I think it's a legitimate thing in sport. Blockbuster yeah. fatigue. That you go through a time... And Melbourne are playing a lot of big games. In, a, in an eight, nine-day period, they played the Perth Wildcats in front of a packed house. Mm -hmm. They went to Sydney in front of the biggest King standalone crowd of all time. And then three days later, they, they backed it up in the biggest... Say it again, non-playoff game in the NBL regular season. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying they're bored. And I think subconsciously, as an athlete, it can sometimes be like, you know what, we're playing all these massive games. And mm -hmm. while it was and is the biggest game of the regular season last year with the roof open, mm -hmm. six, seven months ago, they played in a hell of a lot bigger games when they went through a five-game yeah. grand final series. Now, there are problems defensively, and Adelaide run and gun and can do that to a team. They allowed themselves an opportunity because of their offensive arsenal late to steal it or to get the win. But it'd be interesting to see into the new year if they actually are able to... And it's not something you can just switch on and off, mm. but sometimes the intensity level isn't quite there. When you roll into Game 5, and we were all in the building last year, mm. that joint was going nuts. Yes. And sometimes it's not always that easy when you're playing a lot of these games to be able to do it again. And I just yeah. want to see how it goes. It holds them in good stead because they play, like Perth do, in big moments and it helps them in fourth quarters of big games. But it'll be interesting to see if there's anything in this. I think that loss to Adelaide also speaks to how just outrageously close it is within also that. Also true. Mm -hmm. we're, well, within the league, but mm -hmm. particularly within that top five right now, if, you don't, if you're not firing on all cylinders, you don't and turn up at that level, you're going to get beat. And you think about... Uh, Melbourne, they're coming off the back of those two great wins. Everyone's back on the bandwagon. And maybe they have a little bit less to play for in that game on Boxing Day. Whereas Adelaide, they met at Adelaide Airport at 7am on Christmas Day. Flew down. Guys like, I mean, Brendan Tees has a newborn. It was her first, her, his, I'm not sure. It was his child's first Christmas. And he had to be gone mm. at 7 o'clock. They get to Melbourne, they spend most of the afternoon training, sweating it out, doing video. It was the most boring Christmas any of them have ever had. 
but they were locked into getting that win because they really, really needed it. Hunter v Hunter argument, which happens a lot in sport, mm. not necessarily saying it's an excuse because if you win a championship, you do have that arrow on your back. But mm. that's the big thing. Mm. Clubs and teams get up when you're going through it on a, on a continual thing. Now, I know we've got the NBA ladder there. I just want to throw that up because I want to... Ooh. We did this a couple of weeks ago. All right, who's going to finish fourth? Liam? Uh, well, give Adelaide. me the four. Give me the, so Adelaide will come in. Do you think Brisbane just miss? Or do you think... Yeah, I think Brisbane just missed. Okay, and Adelaide... same, same as what I picked you know, look, four look, weeks ago. Look at this. Melbourne and Brisbane played this week. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a huge one. It's on the Gold Coast. If the, Bris if the Bullets get the win, there's only a game separating those two teams as, mm. we, as we head into 2019. Mm. What do you think, Tommy? I think Brisbane's in there, and I actually think Perth could fall to fourth and, and Melbourne and Brisbane move to second and third by the end of the season. Now, I have canned yes or no because there was so much social media what? outrage when I screwed it a couple of weeks ago, so I've given it a rest into the new year. But yes or no, it's simple. I'll go to you first. Perth Wildcats bring in a third import? No. No. All right. Good. All right, nbl.com.au is where you can like read... Like, as in, should they or will they? No, will they? Not should they, will they? No. no. Okay, nbl.com.au is where you can read all Liam Sand and Mary's great work. And I did notice that you've put a memorable moments, not favourite moments... Yes. Memorable moments or biggest moments? Biggest moments. Biggest, sorry. Biggest Looking moments back, yeah. of the NBL season. And, and very rarely do I disagree with your work, but there was a couple of things you didn't raise your eyebrow. <laughs> Talk us through it, Liam. <laughs> OK, yeah, well, that's... Um, yeah, 10 was all the game winners. Yeah. Obviously, uh, 9 was um, the quadruple overtime game, yeah. the thriller in the Illa. Yeah. Um, yeah. The indigenous there game, the melee in Manila. Too low. Te <laughs> Too low. <laughs> well, technically, it was a Basketball Australia event, but so many NBL players yeah. involved, it mm -hmm. felt like an NBL story. Rise of like, the Phoenix. Man, to Sports me, Centre one, for crying out loud. Low. Oh, is it? You to, to me, this, we're talking about the way this league's improving and now we've finally got a ninth team that's been announced mm -hmm. and that's only sixth on your list. The league's expanding. All right, it's well, huge. top five, Summer League takeover. Oh, he's, put, he's put himself his own junket <laughs> no. in the top five. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all about Mitchell Reed <laughs> and all the NBL people over there. Record crowds yeah. and uh, oh, just continue... Oh. To do good things. Uh, the 2008 final series, yes. 18 final series, everything that was involved in yep. that. Um, one thing I didn't mention that was Joey Wright's self imposed media ban, mm. which was <laughs> a whole bunch of fun. He was, just, he was just doing the best he could. <laughs> NBA, seven mm -hmm. NBL, seven. NBA games was outrageous, and we almost got a win a few times. And well, we all know the whole ground, the earth underneath the NBL has shifted. With Andrew Bogut's and, and arrival. And my favourite moment ties in with that one is Andrew Gaze talking about the hellacious <laughs> dunk and how much it aroused <laughs> yeah. him. Yes. I agree with the Bogut one. I think number one, mm -hmm. and most of that is pretty right. I, I think the number three is understated that Melbourne United winning a championship is linked to the Melbourne... I, I actually legitimately think that if Melbourne United, ha United hadn't have won it and had the success yeah. last year, Melbourne Phoenix, the Phoenix, the next licence, wouldn't have been Melbourne-based. Because I still think there would have been a slight... Hey, is, is basketball really as big? Right. You know, we're, we're, mm. you know, we're sports fans. We're fickle. <laughs> like, and when something wins, we jump on and it's great. I'm and just not Mike certain. Bogut, say... Imagine if Melbourne didn't win that championship. Might Bogut be playing yeah, for might Melbourne, be Melbourne United? Because mm. so, part of it surely was yep. a bit like, well, yeah, the champs. Let me go say, I want to do a Kevin Durant. No doubt. Exactly. And what kind of an impact has it been? Not only a Bogut coming to the league, but coming to Sydney. That franchise that needed a boost like he has provided and the combination of Bogut, Randall, Gaze, it's just a beautiful thing. Sydney side is unbelievably fickle when it comes to sporting events and you just have to look at the NRL to actually prove that to be correct. But the thing that I was really impressed with, of course, 12 and a half or 12,050, whatever it was against Melbourne United the following week, to which they lost, nearly 10,000 went there on Sunday to watch Brisbane in a, in a traditionally a pretty tough time slot in between Christmas and New Year. People might be out mm. of the city. They lost the week before, all the rest of it. Nearly 10,000 went there to watch the game on the weekend. I, so yep. I keep saying Sunday, it was Saturday. I think that's a, a huge sign, not only of... Andrew Bogut, but he's led this revival off court with the brand of the Kings, which it hasn't been seen since Dwayne McLean <laughs> did a McDonald's ad back in 1992. Yes. Well, it's so good to see them up and about. They are on top of the table right now. They are. Here are their next four games. Hit me. Illawarra. Win. Cairns. Win. New Zealand. Win. Illawarra. Win. Win. Now, if they go marching into the finals in top spot with home court advantage throughout... Imagine the crowds at Kudos Bank Arena. Mm -hmm. Might need to open the SCG. Can we all just touch wood? We need the bogeyman to stay healthy. Okay. 
and it's just going to be a great thing. NBL.com.au, obviously Liam Santamaria does such a wonderful job, as does Tommy Hurst, and I know you've been watching, mm. well Tommy and I have been celebrating, and obviously Corey's still celebrating, <laughs> we haven't quite seen every single moment, but you have, from what has been a big couple of weeks in the yes. NBL, what have, you, what have you caught up I've with? picked out a couple of things, let's um, start in Illawarra, Here we go. in the gong, this is actually from round 10, yeah, Tommy Jervis, look at the score there, 340 early in the first quarter, mm. Tommy Jervis going to the line, knocks it down, Good stroke. Have a look at the line he's put together. Wow. <laughs> Tell you what. 62 points, 51 <laughs> rebounds. Tell you what, that is a massive triple double oh, for Tommy Jay. Really good line yesterday. Wow. <laughs> the world's raving yeah. about James Harden's 50 point triple double. <laughs> and Jervis just blows him out in a wow. four minute period in the gong. Well, Pretty Chamber good. Deserves respect, the big fella. Of course, Angus Brand and <laughs> yep. Nick K have been playing really better. Well, it's Jervis so good to see him putting up numbers oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> that proves the NBL has never been better. <laughs> no one in the has put those numbers up. <laughs> we don't need to go to 48 minutes. Look at the numbers, people. Are putting up. All right, let's stay in the gong. That same game, at the end of it, Illawarra got the win, and don't these ladies love it? <laughs> oh, they're very excited. Joey Wright, look, here he tells, go into their huddle. He just told the, uh, his Adelaide players, go into their huddle. He thought the, uh, there was going to be a sneaky timeout. Uh, speaking of timeouts, Drew is trying to bark the instructions mm -hmm. here, and look at the going on here. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just, a, just a little tickle. Hang on, who is that? That's a nice, that's the that's team the manager. Team manager? Who oh, did the swan dive no. better, Nathan oh. Sophie? Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, <laughs> on the side, <laughs> William. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that could be and life there's the reaction actually. from Rob Lowe to yeah, the swan dive. Fair enough, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, that live footage from Corey Williams, of course, is in the harbour, and he may or may not be back this time. Next week, Leo Santa is watching always. NBL.com, <laughs> check it all out. All right, all NBL first and second teams. It's something that I don't think we've actually done until this point, mm. have we? We didn't even give predictions of it, but we have actually got them as we sit at the halfway point of the year as they're flashing up right about it. Here we go. First teams. There you go. Liam, you go first. Well, what I think is interesting is how similar we all are. Look, mm. our first teams are all exactly the same. We're Cotton, Patterson, K, Bogut. So lock them in at this point, you mm -hmm. would think. Um, so then you look at the second team and see where we've gone different. I've gone Randall, Trimble, Soby, and then on the inside, Ty Wesley and Daniel Johnson. Tom, you've not gone Randall. Randall. Randall's on no. the top no. ten players Glidden in the league. have gone over Randall. I've gone, I, I have, and I've gone... Uh, I think Randall will probably be there by the end of the year, but I had Trimble ahead of Randall. That was a bit of a tough decision for me, mostly because the numbers Trimble are putting, it's putting up are outstanding, and Randall is still getting to his peak form. But I love Glidden's impact for Brisbane mm. on this team, and I wanted to reward that because he does it on both ends, right? He's been, mm -hmm. he's been a scorer when they've needed it, uh, and he's been a leader as well when they've needed it. Mm. And defensively, we all know what he, can, what he can do, so to me that's really important. I actually thought we were going traditional uh, two guards, two forwards and a centre. <laughs> 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 but uh, as we see, we've got three outsides and inside, which is probably the way the game plays out. I, I tell you, I, okay. I, I, look, he would have been the one probably might have got down. squeezed out. He has probably, his last two or three weeks haven't been great, but he's carried the scoring of a team that can't shoot threes. He's the All only right. guy on the outside. And I just thought I'd give, give him some respect. And not you've also got Mr Double Double uh, in the uh, big spot there. Sean Long. Uh, we've gone Ty Wesley and Daniel Johnson. Mm, yeah. You've left oh, Ty I like Wesley what out. Been doing. I've left Wesley out. I've put Long in. I think that he has changed. Uh, Wesley's... Been okay. And He's I been think, better uh, than he was last year when he was All NBL second team. Statistically, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really listen to statistics, although that's going to contradict what I say now, because Daniel Johnson's statistics are very, very good, considering <laughs> we've the question where he's been for some part of the yeah. year. Well, but Wesley, he's averaging more points, more assists, more steals, more blocks. Do you think he's having more rebounds, of an impact on games slightly than what he less. did last year? Well, he doesn't have as much talent around him. Yes, I think he has. Do you think he's having more impact? Yes. All right, well, I'm going to do... Who, who do New Zealand play this week? Adelaide. OK, I'm going to watch that game because I watched <laughs> the weekend's game and they weren't anywhere near it. Yeah, and Sean Long... Going to watch it again. Sean Long didn't have a great one as well. But I think the whole team were pretty poor. Yes. New Zealand are I'll, an enigma. They'll be much better this week. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but as it stands right now, watch New Zealand to Ty Wesley, who was great last year. I'll think about putting you in the All-NBL team at the end of the year. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, yes or no has been canned what? for one week. Let's just call it a that New is... Year's... Let's call it a New Year's Eve hangover for yes or no. That's just soft. But I've got a couple of things I want to run by both of you. OK. This is not called yes or no, it's called discussion. <laughs> We've just had 25 Christmas minutes. Day sport. 
Christmas Day NBL next year, Phoenix v United yeah. on Christmas night. You already touched on the fact that, you know, everyone says, ah, oh, these are pro athletes, they should spend time with their families. United trained on Christmas Day. Adelaide travelled on Christmas Day. You know, you look at any big bash, test team, A-League, they're all training or travelling. So that argument sort of goes out the window. I never buy it. I think it would be huge. I think the first governing body that does it, the A-League, the big bash, or the NBL will reap the rewards for eternity. And so you want Melbourne United to play South East Melbourne Phoenix because no Christmas one has to night. travel. No one has to travel. So you don't want the open air Boxing Day game anymore. You have an open air. Have an open you air Christmas Day. You don't want to play on Boxing Day. Day anymore. Have a Christmas Day open air. No. Why? Well, Boxing Day was full. It was. Every single seat in the yeah. stadium was purchased yeah. and sat in. You know what you could do? If you want to go one step further, you could have closed roof on Christmas Day and one of the teams, Phoenix or Melbourne, have open air Boxing Day and they, they back it up the next day. You're going to bring in a team from interstate to play on Christmas Day? No, Boxing Day. And so now Melbourne I'm... be Melbourne <laughs> on Christmas Day yep. and one of them plays the next day? Open air. Wow. If, that's, if, you're really, if you're really wedded to actually having the situation nah. where you have the open air Boxing Day Bring game... Bring back yes or no. So you, do you want no? I'm um, no. You know Christmas Day sport for you? Christmas Day sport, yes. Yes? Not if you're backing up on Boxing Day. Okay, well then don't back up. I wouldn't back up either. I'm just throwing <laughs> it out there because Liam's like, we're not at the open roof. <laughs> Can we see Benny Manjin next year back in the NBL? Yeah, I think there's a chance. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts do you think suits him the best? Um, sort of that kind of Knox, Juan Turner mm. area here in Victoria would yeah. be pretty good. I like it. Yeah, I like uh, it. He's, he's playing pretty well overseas mm. as well. He's a guy mm. that was, you know, and this always, we see this a little bit, they develop from being in a more hostile environment in, in some aspects of the way that people watch their games in Europe. So it'd be interesting to see if Benny Madgen's back because he's a guy that not only does he play good basketball, but he's a guy that people really like because he's... Yeah. Loose cannon's the wrong word, but he brings excitement. He's got a bit of rock star. Yeah. He wants to throw a chair on the court, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, me too. He's <laughs> so a, com he's a competitor. Yeah. yeah, competitor's the right word, not mm. loose cannon, competitor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, as it stands right now... We're done and dusted. Hashtag NBL19. <laughs> well, welcome back to you, man. And Good I job, appreciate Tommy. the fact that you didn't... Oh, you know what I actually want to bring up? Oh. I haven't got the photo. Corey Williams is 100% against wearing a singlet yes. without a T-shirt underneath it if you're an adult. No, no a jersey. A jersey. A jersey, yeah. a jersey sorry. Yeah. A jersey. Yeah. yeah. He was rocking it last week <laughs> uh -huh. in the streets of Melbourne and on 15 or 16 Instagram stories okay. where he's just rocking a Penny Hardaway old school Orlando Magic jersey. Yep. Nothing underneath. Did he make it look good? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he probably did. can say that he's not here. Uh, hashtag NBL19, hashtag NBL overtime to get involved. This weekend, you're going to be where, Liam? Um, Adelaide, back in Adelaide on Friday night. What are you doing, Tommy? I'll good? be just here watching and yes. riding. Same as me. You know, I won't be riding, I'll just be watching. <laughs> on that note, we're done. Have a very, very great first week of 2019. NBL overtime back this time next week. Get involved. Hashtag NBL19. See ya.